So Phoebe and I, being members of the search committee, have met with you a couple of times. And from, from those meetings, we've known that you are pretty well researched on Hamilton College. Mm -hmm. And we were wondering, what's it like to finally be here? You know, it's been an incredible 36 hours. It's, it's, <laughs> it's all gone very fast. You guys have been fantastic. You know, <laughs> and I was so impressed with both of you during the search. Extraordinary, talented group of people on that committee. But you two really stood out. You talked with such passion and commitment about the college. And I thought, wow, if Hamilton students are like this, that's where I want to be. It is a small, intimate, engaged learning community. And you can't replicate that on a huge campus. So in my current role, we don't have, it's not a residential uh, place. The law students don't live on campus. Uh, and that's very different. We do have a, an athletic team. We have a hockey team, the Fighting Mondales, but we don't have the whole range of athletics or arts programs or concerts and all the things that happen on a campus like Hamilton. What do you see as Hamilton's biggest strengths and also biggest challenges for the future? So, so that's an interesting question and, and not an easy one. So the biggest strengths, you could talk about you know, the beauty of the campus, which is true. You can talk about the unique programs Hamilton has, the writing program, the open curriculum. All those are terrific. But what really makes a college are the people. And you know what I've found in just the short time I've been here is how incredibly engaged everyone is, how passionate they are about learning, how much they like the campus and the college. Uh, and that's exciting. I think many of the challenges Hamilton faces are faced by higher education generally. So it's a rapidly changing environment. Now, there are demographic changes, technological changes, political and social changes in the broader society globalization. And we don't really know where all of these things are headed, but we do know they will have a significant impact on the way we run the college. So there's been a lot of discussion about diversity and inclusiveness yes. uh, nationally and also at Hamilton. Mm -hmm. And so I was hoping you could talk a little bit about that too. So it's been an incredibly interesting time, you know, not just at Hamilton, but on college campuses all around the country, including at Minnesota. These issues have come to the fore. And they should come to the fore. These are incredibly important issues, and I applaud the people who are raising them. We do need to find ways to make more progress. My understanding is that Hamilton has made a lot of progress in recent years. I think the student body is now 23% uh, students of color, which is up from maybe 13 or 14% just 10 years ago, so that's terrific. Um, there are new programs, the Days Masolo Center, there was a conversation here just the other night. Um, so a lot of progress has been made, but everyone I've talked to has said there's room for a lot more to be done, and I fully agree and support that position. What made you want to come to Hamilton to assume the presidency? I entered university administration, I don't know, 12 years ago. Everyone asked the same question. For my colleagues on the faculty, it was, why are you going over to the dark side? <laughs> but I had a great experience at Cornell as an administrator, and I wasn't looking for that role. The president of the university called me, was looking for someone to run international programs at Cornell. And I'm always open to trying new things, and I tried it and liked it. I like the problem-solving aspect. I like the broader view uh, of the educational environment. And so I decided I would stay in academic administration. And I reached an inflection point this year with the conclusion of a campaign at Minnesota. And I thought about my future, and I realized that if I'm going to be working 24-7 as an educator, which is really what you do in these positions, then I wanted to do it in service of the best educational model I could find. And I really think that's what Hamilton provides. It really is the gold standard. Just curious if you plan on doing any teaching here at Hamilton. Uh, absolutely. So I have been teaching at Minnesota. I teach international law, human rights, law of war. Um, and I'd love to do some teaching here in Hamilton. So I want to get my feet on the ground first and kind of figure out my duties as president. So I'm hoping to do uh, at least a seminar or a course on international law. I know you're graduating, Phoebe, but if Caleb doesn't sign up for my course, I'm going to be calling him and knocking on his door. <laughs> you spent a great deal of your time after law school dealing with international law. Yes. And I was wondering, how did you get involved with international law? You know, I, I got there the old-fashioned way completely by accident. <laughs> I, I didn't even take international law in law school. I don't know why. I mean, I now encourage everyone to take it. I, I, in, some, in some schools, it's required now. But for whatever reason, I didn't take it. And I went to a, a law firm in Washington, DC, uh, expecting to do litigation. And when I got there, they didn't have any litigation. And I was doing some corporate work in real estate and just not interested in it. 
And the partner walked in to my office and said, I am thinking of bringing a lawsuit uh, in the world court on behalf of Nicaragua. Uh, would you be interested in working on it? And I said, well, sure. And so uh, by necessity, I learned international law and that is now my field. Tell us a little about what you do to relax outside of this. So I, I, know, I read the job description very carefully and it didn't say anything about relaxation in it, <laughs> but assuming that there's an opportunity for that, um, I've already been connected with a cycling group here at Hamilton. Good. So I'm, I'm an avid cyclist. That's a different thing than saying I'm a good cyclist, but I love to do it. And I used to do it in the Finger Lakes area, so not far down the road. And then I'm, a, I'm also an avid skier. Uh, both downhill and this year I decided I'm going to learn cross country and I do a lot of reading. I'm a, I'm a huge reader and now of course I'm reading Alexander Hamilton's biography. <laughs> well this has been great. Thank you for speaking with us. Yeah, well thank you both so much for your work on the committee and for taking the time to host me this weekend and for doing this interview.